It's amazing how many people say they eat healthy but have health problems. We've already established that vegan does not mean healthy. Bread, imitation meat, fake cheese, vegan pizza, and cereal are not healthy. None of those people who say they followed my book, Kill Yourself 101, yeah, they selectively followed the parts they liked and skipped over the unpleasant stuff they were supposed to do. They say they used my cookbook, but they only made the cookies and the cheesecake and the Pop-Tarts and, and the chocolate cake and all the sweet stuff that are just supposed to be an occasional treat. And they didn't listen to the part where I said, if you have a serious health problem, then no sugar at all. They say they stay away from sugar, but maple syrup is sugar. You know, orange juice is a form of sugar. It doesn't matter if it's fructose, maltose, sucrose, galactose, dextrose, it's all a form of sugar. And sugar is a universal fuel source for anything inside you that's alive, good or bad. If you feel tired after eating or drinking something, then that's a sugar crash, an insulin overload. You've had too much sugar or refined carbs. If you have dark spots on your skin, then you've been doing this for quite some time. Anyway, every now and then, there's someone determined to cause a scene about how they did everything right but have a health problem anyway. So imagine their surprise when one day they open the front door and I'm standing there with a smile. Hi, mind if I uh, come in and have a gander at your fridge and cupboards? <laughs> it might as well have been the IRS or the FBI. Oh, the look on their face was priceless. Their cupboards were filled with bread, cereal, crackers, cookies, pizza, chocolate, cream cheese, sliced cheese, imitation meat, ice cream, butter, creamy salad dressings, orange juice, apple juice, store-bought smoothies with 19 grams of sugar in it, coffee, soda, beer, spritzers, granola bars, food bars, all kinds of pasta, cream sauces, all natural candy bars, and on and on and on. <laughs> and they all said, oh, that's my husband's or, or my kid's. Uh-huh. Uh, your manly man husband eats haagen dazs French vanilla ice cream. Yes. Yes, he does. Uh, and croissants. Yes. Yes, he does. Uh-huh. <laughs> they swore up and down that they were raw vegan and they eat healthy and no bread, no dairy, no sugar. And they just ran low on greens and stuff because they were about to go to the grocery store right as I showed up. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> you don't get to the bottom of something listening to what people say. It's from what they're not saying. So I said, okay, look. So you're complaining to everyone about your health problem. Now, we can do blood tests, but that would take a week or two to get the results. Or we can do a lie detector test right here and now. I have a portable one with me that attaches to a laptop. And I can probably zero in on the causes within the next five minutes. They freaked out so much, I didn't even have to use a lie detector. They started spilling the beans and the truth within minutes. Now, to be fair, not everyone was that bad. There were a few trying really hard to do the right thing, but they still either had cheat foods or they did things they thought were okay but didn't know that were not optimal to their health. Some of the common ones were they drank coffee. Coffee has polyphenols that bind medications, herbs, and phytonutrients, rendering them useless to the body. Coffee is high in the tissue irritant and nutrient binder oxalic acid, as in kidney stones. Coffee raises cholesterol and blood sugar, and the caffeine crashes the adrenals, often leading to allergies, asthma, autoimmune disorders, thyroid issues, blood pressure issues, anxiety, insomnia, weakened bones, and uh, breast cysts for women. And, um, and the tannins in coffee, they kill probiotic gut flora, people don't know this, which increases the absorption of toxins from the colon, since one of the rules of the flora is to break down the various toxins, such as hormone metabolites. The roasting process in coffee produces carcinogenic, polycyclic, aromatic hydrocarbons and acrylamide. They drink orange juice, thinking it's healthy. Pasteurized means it's been boiled to death. There's no vitamin C left, and the fiber is taken out. It's basically just a glass of highly concentrated sugar water. They often had antibiotics within the last five or 10 years. Antibiotics kill your gut probiotics. It could take years to get it back. But what are they getting back? The type of gut bacteria you grow is determined by what you eat. For example, a 2013 Harvard study found that dairy rapidly changes the microorganisms in your gut, resulting in high levels of inflammation in the gastrointestinal tract. They found that just after two days of animal-based diet, microbes, fungus, bacteria, and viruses quickly colonized in the gut. Um, the healthy kind of gut bacteria feeds on fiber. If all you've been eating is cheese, bread, meat, and junk food for the last 30 years, 
and you have no good probiotics, only pathogenic ones and yeast. So if you eat fiber and greens, those bad probiotics won't know what it is, they won't touch it, and it just ferments creating gas and bloating. So then the people go back to eating meat again, they feel better, but that's because they, haven't, they don't, don't have any healthy plant digesting probiotics in them. It does not mean that, they, that the, the plant food is bad or that they have the wrong blood type. Our main doorway and secret to health is having the correct probiotics and it doesn't happen overnight. They control everything. Their main food supply is fiber. Animal products thicken the blood and raise blood pressure, whereas plants have compounds that lower blood pressure. Cooking breaks down fiber into simple sugars, which makes you feel good and gives you energy, but long-term health comes from the gut flora, and their main food supply is raw plant fiber. We cannot digest raw plant fiber for a reason. It's meant to bypass our digestive system and make it to the lower intestine where it can feed our probiotics, which in turn give us health, they remove toxins, and our nutrients absorb better into our body. Your gut is where most of the battles take place, and in gut inflammation is the result. Of course, sugar is like a huge culprit, but another huge one that most people don't think about is high omega-6 fatty acid foods like soy, corn, canola, or cottonseed oil. They're highly inflammatory, leading to ulcers, constipation, and even cancer. People who eat salads and get gut inflammation and constipation are quick to blame the greens and the fiber, but they don't think twice about the salad dressing. Read the ingredients. I almost guarantee you they have inflammatory oils plus some kind of sweetener which feeds the yeast which then totally blocks the intestines. So now everything backs up, bulging out the intestines, creating pockets which become infected and now you've got a real mess. Yeast is dimorphic. Once it's fed by any kind of sweetener, it turns into a more aggressive fungal form which grows tentacles that burrow through the intestinal walls and starts working its way up through your body. So now you've got holes in your intestines and your poop is leaking into your bloodstream. I know it's gross. <laughs> but it doesn't matter what kind of sugar you use. People think it's okay to use honey and maple syrup and coconut sugar and agave nectar and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Even the healthier choices, it's still sugar and it's all highly concentrated sugar. The longest living people might have a small treat once a month, but it's supposed to be an occasional treat, not a daily ingredient. People might go to the produce section and, you know, but all they end up getting is sweet fruits, mangoes, bananas, watermelon, oranges, but hardly any bitter greens, which should be at least half of what they eat, plus nuts and seeds and avocados and other healthy fats. People choose red apples over green because they're sweeter. Red apples contain way too much sugar. And then there's kombucha. Most kombucha is more detrimental than helpful. If it tastes sweet, the sugar overpowers the health benefits. It makes cultures live longer on the shelf and it tastes better, which helps it sell. If your lips feel sticky afterwards, there was way too much sugar in the food. Some of these people were uh, on some kind of medication, headache pills, stomach pills, pain meds, anti-inflammatories, or steroid meds to help fight the inflammation caused by their diet of wheat, sugar, dairy, coffee, and lack of exercise and sunlight. You know, all meds mess up the body system somehow. They took antacids, um, alkaline water or calcium pills, these all lower stomach acid which is needed to digest food and kill germs and pathogens and break down the acid dependent vitamins like or nutrients like B vitamins. Granola bars and food bars, a lot of people have those, super high calories and sugar. Want to get fat? Eat granola bars. <laughs> Most people had some kind of cereal, dead food. They all had a box of crackers in the cupboard. Even if it wasn't wheat or gluten, they all had some kind of highly inflammatory refined vegetable oils. That tapioca flour mixed with rice flour has a higher glycemic index than normal flour. That malt syrup it's sweetened with is on par with high fructose corn syrup. That safflower oil in your crackers and gluten-free bread is highly inflammatory. Most people sneak pizza in there somehow. Vegan or not, it doesn't matter, it's junk food. They all had cheese of some kind. Even if it's vegan, it's not health food. Impossible burgers and other fake meat is gluten and highly refined with vegetable oils. It's highly inflammatory. Vegan substitutions are no healthier. You might as well eat the real cheese, butter, and ice cream because you'll die just as fast eating the highly refined vegan versions. Almost all the people I saw didn't exercise. This is huge. Colon, bowel, and intestinal issues are very common with people who sit a lot and don't move their body enough. 
And that's one of the things I talked about in Heal Yourself 101 that people skip over. People do not think this is a big deal. It's huge. It's seriously important. And most middle-aged people, especially women, do not exercise and they or walk an hour a day and they definitely do not do the weight training they should be. This is one of the causes of weak, brittle bones for older women, plus the milk and the dairy and the sugar. What do all the Blue Zone people have in common, even the ones in the Mediterranean uh, who, who have bread and cheese and wine and meat in their diet? Almost none of them have a car. They walk or they ride a bicycle everywhere. They move their body a lot every day. They don't sit around on their cell phone or computer or TV. I say this over and over in my book, Heal Yourself 101, but people think my book is just about what to eat. And they say they followed my book, but they didn't. They only did the parts they wanted to do. They didn't exercise. They didn't do the weight training. They didn't do the animas. They only did the sweet smoothies and not the bitter green stuff. Most people snack all day. People don't realize the implications of this. Anything you eat, anything, no matter how healthy it is, unless it's pure fat, will release insulin. And insulin ages you. The more insulin your body pumps out, the more insulin resistant you become, which results in more inflammation and snacking all day crushes your antioxidants. It wears out your pancreas. It increases cholesterol, triglycerides, which is your blood fats. It increases blood pressure and pressure on the arteries. It retains sodium. It promotes lipogenesis, which is the creation of fat. It blocks lipase, which breaks down fat. So in other words, the moment you start snacking on anything, no matter how healthy, your fat burning stops. And then there's CBD products, not just from smoking, which of course messes up the lungs, but also the oils and the edibles. Cannabis users have stiffer arteries leading to acceleration of the aging process, increased heart rate and pressure. And if you smoke it, your risk of heart attack goes up 500% within the first hour. Of course, weed lovers will refuse to accept this, but an unprecedented study of over 300,000 people showed the same results over and over. It relaxes your blood vessels for about an hour, but then does a complete 180, constricting blood vessels, and this vasoconstriction is where the heart attacks and the strokes happen. This constriction also cuts the ability to exercise in half, by the way. Um, dairy is not only a constipation causing glue to the human body, it's, in a, it's a strong estrogenic. And estrogen increases insulin and fuels hormone-driven cancers like breast, ovarian, cervical, and prostate. Is that milk, butter, and cheese, and creamy salad dressing really worth it? Beer is highly estrogenic, so here we are again with breast, ovarian, and cervical cancer. Alcohol creates fatty liver, which when combined with insulin, destroys protein, which not only results in muscle wasting, but also diabetes, clogged arteries, stroke, and kidney failure. Yes, that also includes that one glass of wine per day. All right, so how come the Mediterraneans get away with it better? I already said why. They don't drive cars. They mainly walk. They ride bikes. They don't spend their day on the internet or cell phone. They get sunlight and they don't snack all day. Most people had a bunch of canned foods like baked beans, for example, filled with all kinds of sugar. Sugar is in almost everything. Almost all restaurant food contains sugar, including soup, salad, salad dressing, sushi, pasta sauce. Salads usually have candied nuts or caramelized crunchy stuff. Remember, if it's baked in an oven, it's dead food. People don't chew their food enough. Chewing food properly releases necessary pre-digestive enzymes, a big issue with people with digestive issues. How many people are eating their sea moss? Most people aren't. How many people do enemas? Most people don't. How many people do bitter greens juices instead of sweet juices? Most people don't. They don't do H-I-I-T. If you don't know what that is, then you're obviously not doing it. People are always looking for a shortcut and their food choices are based on instant gratification, not long-term investments. If you have a glass of green juice and put a spoonful of poison in there and you die, are you going to say, it was mainly healthy stuff, therefore it was the green juice that killed me? <laughs> they have a salad and pat themselves on the head saying, see, I'm healthy. Uh, yeah, but you put half a bottle of blue cheese dressing on there, or ranch dressing, or some kind of other white creamy glue. Look at the label on everything you eat. I mean everything. All the boxes, the bags, the bottles and jars. Almost everything is some kind of highly refined inflammatory refined vegetable oil. Like safflower oil, canola oil, sunflower oil or palm oil. Do you want ulcerative colitis? Do you want IBS or Crohn's or autoimmune disease or fibromyalgia or colon cancer or diabetes or lupus or fibroids or hemorrhoids or heart disease? I mean, the denial is mind boggling. 
people try to convince themselves they're healthy as they keep snacking on processed foods and they wonder why they get healthy shoes. Stop trying to blame something else, including yourself. The blood type diet was disproven years ago. Genetics was also discussed in various videos. What most people inherit is their parents' eating habits, which can be difficult to overcome after 20 years of programming, but I did it. And as for the remaining 2%, read up on epigenetics. Just because you have a predisposition for something does not mean those genes need to be triggered. You are in control. You can change your future. Stop being brainwashed by whiny online self-pity groups using paid-for self-interest studies as their proof. If you want results, you need to be strong and stick to something and not cheat. If you eat the health, even if you eat the healthiest foods, stop snacking every time you pass the damn kitchen. Again, anything you eat, unless it's pure fat, will release insulin and insulin ages you. Kara and I have lots of energy because we eat lots of bitter foods. We're willing to pay the price. 10 minutes of bitter for half a day of energy and health versus 10 minutes of sweet comfort food for half a day of sluggish tiredness and eventual health issues. It's a choice. If you have health problems, you need to be brutally honest with yourself and figure out what it is that you're sneaking into your mainly healthy diet and lifestyle that's undermining your efforts. Stop trying to kid yourself. You're only hurting yourself. Stop blaming others. Stop blaming genetics. Stop blaming everything around you and have a really good look at every single thing you're putting in your mouth, your mind, and your life. Read the damn ingredients on the box and don't skip over that one questionable ingredient because you like the product so much that you want to keep eating and drinking it. Stop kidding yourself. And don't blame yourself either. Science and biology just is what it is. The stuff we usually need help with the most is the stuff we don't want help with. People are stubborn and they're just in denial so much. They want the feel good stuff. Do you want to feel good for 10 minutes? Or do you want to feel good for the rest of your life? The choice is yours. Invest wisely.